Welcome to the one in the shoebox. The. Welcome to what in the shoebox. Do I normally say the? Oh my God, now I'm so confused. Welcome to what in the shoe bar. Welcome to what in the shoe bar with Sujia and Ed. We're just two Asian Americans talking shit about shit. I just found out Archie might have a mineral deficiency. If you want to know more about that, watch our Patreon. Listen, I don't know. I am not a veterinarian. I've just watched a lot of weird reality television. And I know that some people lick and eat weird things when they have certain deficiencies, like, you know, mineral deficiencies. Yeah. You know, like somebody just takes a bite out of the sidewalk. I don't know what the fuck yeah. to tell you. But how was your week? Uh, it was great. Uh, I had a really relatively easy week. Um, you know, I'm a fucking sports mom. I'm like full throttle now. The girls are playing basketball and volleyball, so I'm at a practice oh, or playing driving. Basketball now too. Yeah, the little ones playing basketball. Daddy's the coach. It makes things complex. But oh I was, my god, you guys are a coaching couple. We are. Alliteration, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> we are a coaching couple. Um, we're kind of like a power couple at the school. <laughs> <laughs> Things to uh, look forward to in your forties. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually really cool. It's very fun. Um, we're like the Travis Kelsey and Taylor oh, Swift. Oh, she people. went there. <laughs> um, no, but you know, so there's so it's. I honestly think, like, obviously, loving, caring, nurturing, parenting is important, but a big part of parenting is just logistics. It's yeah. just where is everybody supposed to be when and how are they going to get there? It's such a huge part of it. Like I'm like, all right, so-and-so has got practice at six here. And then she's got another clinic at this place at this time. School gets out at this time. So they have to do homework and eat at this time, but we can't drive there this time because there, there's so much. I don't even have kids. That's one of the biggest anxieties I have about having children possibly one day. It's like when tough. I see those videos or photos, or like in the movies or TV shows of like those calendars people put on the things. I'm it's like- It's real, it's so real. I have such a hard time with ADHD managing my own schedule. Dude, Oh my God. it's so gnarly. Like, And then there are parents on my kids' teams who have like three, four kids, all with different schedules. And then it's a divide and conquer. And like, you can't, you have to sacrifice certain games for certain tournaments and do this versus that. And it's, it's a lot, but you know. What time do you have to get up as a parent? Well, it depends. Um, my anxiety gets me up usually around 5, 15, <laughs> 5 30, funny. but my alarm is set for like, um, you know, absolute latest is like six o'clock, six o'clock in order for me to get up, get everything ready for the day, get breakfast in there in the kids and then, you know, go do what I need to do. Are you one of those, like, I set my alarm for six ten. I wake up at six ten. Or are you one of those, like, I set my alarm to go off every nine minutes for 30 Anyone minutes who prior. sets their alarm for six ten is a sociopath. <laughs> That's what I think. Instead of six? People who, no, no. I, I just did a video. I posted it literally seconds ago talking about setting your alarm. And somebody made a video, actually a friend of mine made a video saying that you only set your alarm for multiples of five. Or, you know, like five, 10, 15, 20. I've never set my alarm for five, 10. If I need to get up around six, it's 6.04. Or if I need to get up at like 6.15, I set it for 6.09 or like 6.12. Never, and actually always an odd number, never. Oh my God, my brain. <laughs> what? Wait. Neurodivergence. <laughs> no, I, I, I really am starting to think that, I, I know that I am, I just don't know in what ways and to what degree. Yeah. I would never set my alarm for an even number and I would never set it for the fives or tens. Yeah. So it's only like 11, nine, oh three or whatever. Oh my God, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it no, I 100% <laughs> understand. I stopped doing it, I don't know when, maybe in the last like four or five years, but I used to have this really big problem where I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to leave the house except for on multiples of 15. So like quarter past, half past, quarter of, oh, or see. on the dot. <laughs> See, if I have to leave at 6.15, I have to leave by like 6.11 or 6.12. No, just the thought Never of that. Never on the fives. The thought of that would give Never me on the fives. So Who's on the fives? I'm already late. Why does my brain think that? <laughs> Why does my brain even have to? Let's say it's, I have to get somewhere at seven and it takes me 10 minutes. If I leave at 6.15, I'm like, I'm already late. Yeah. I'm already late. Cause even if it only takes me 10 minutes to get there, I have, 
I have a lot to work out. Yeah. I have a lot of stuff I have to work Understanding out. Understanding you have neurodivergence as a full grown adult yeah. is wild. Because it's, like we when we were kids, they just would be like, Oh, this kid's gifted. And there's like this gifted well, kid I, syndrome. Mine was conversely, oh, she's a troublemaker. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Or <laughs> I, a mixture of both. I was a mixture of both, know? actually. At school, I was like you know, the smart kid, but to my friend's parents, I was like, well, it was either one or the other. I was either like the bad influence mm. or the, oh, I I like take to this kid because I think he was raised by a single mother and he needs like additional love, you know? I, and to those parents, thank you. Yes, I was definitely both. Some people, some people's parents saw me as the troublemaker yep. and other people were like, you know, Susie's a good kid, go hang out with Susie. And I was like, yep. this is so confusing for me. Like yeah. I always felt like I was both and I, was so eager to be the good kid, but I was never a bad kid, but I definitely got into trouble. And I think it was because I was so easily distracted. I was always really bored. I was always, you know, there was always just one reason or another. It was idle hands. Like my mom always yeah. used to hate teacher, parent teacher conferences because every time it was um, Ed disrupts class. Yeah, same. Yeah, Ed disrupts class because he's bored. Yeah. I, I don't, sorry. I think I've told this story before, but my dad was told that I was a busybody. Um, and he was so proud because he didn't know what a busy body was. <laughs> He's like, oh, she keeps herself busy. She works really hard. I'm so proud. I was like, I'm not going to tell him what it means for you. <laughs> He's like, oh, a busy body. Susie's really busy. That's <laughs> so good. Well, oh, you know what I'm imagining in my head? The teacher being like, Susie's a busy body. And your right. dad being like, oh. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and the teacher being right. like, you know, I'm just going to let this go. I'm just, just going to glaze over this one. Just move on. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, how was your week? Good? Um, my week was normal. I got a little case of the gout because um, I couldn't stop myself. What were you, what did you eat? I couldn't stop myself from eating fried chicken twice this week. You know that that's like the one thing that like always, I've known him long enough to know. Number one, but, his love, deep love for fried chicken and the way that his body does not. <laughs> allow me to eat it. And will reject it so like, in the I, most painful way. But the thing was, those two days afterwards, after those two times I ate fried chicken, I was fine. So last night, I was like, well, actually, for the week leading up to it, I was like, I've been craving takdori tang, mm, yum, which like, which is like this like spicy braised chicken. That sounds so good. Yeah, oh, and I was like thinking about it for so long. Yesterday, but I was like, you know what? Fried. It's not, but it's the chicken. It's the protein. Oh. I can't eat meat. Like I'm not supposed to eat meat. Oh, so like, so it's the meat. Yep. Most of the time, the no. Most of the time, I eat a pretty plant based diet, but like you know, I'm Korean and I love I meat. Know, that's hard. <laughs> it is really hard. <laughs> that's why sometimes I'm like, man, Joanne, she is so strong. She's so strong. Korean has like such so much meat. Or like, yeah, there's a lot of fish. You can eat fish. I I, I could. So I could have. I could have. But last night I ate it, and then right before I went to bed, I noticed that. My urine was really dark. So I was like, oh shit, I didn't drink enough water today. And I was like, you know what? I should probably ch chug uh, coconut water before I go to bed. And I was like, I'm already in bed. So I was like, screw it. Middle of the night, I get up to pee and I step on the floor and I was like, oh, right foot Ouch. hurts. Speaking so. of water. Speaking <laughs> of coconut water. Can we talk about this water bottle? We're not sponsored by Awala, although I would love to be. You know the huge craze with the fucking Stanley cups? Mm -hmm. I fell victim to it. Actually, my daughters forced me to fall victim to it because they really wanted one. I mean, they you didn't have suck. to buy one for yourself and your okay. husband. <laughs> this is how this went down, okay? You fucking asshole. No. This is how it went down. We were gonna buy them for the girls and he went to Target. <sighs> and at Target, they only had like crappy colors. But he's like, but what if we can't find them anywhere else for Christmas? I'm gonna get these just in case. Oh. And then I'll go to Dick's Sporting Goods and see if they have them there. And then if they do, I'll get them at Dick's and then return the ones to Target. Well, we all know when you buy something that enters your house, you never fucking return it. And so he says, well, why don't we just keep them and we'll use them? Even if they sit on the counter right by the door until the point of return passes and then it's by default, you can't return right. it. Right, right. <laughs> But in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, there's gotta be something to these Stanley Cups. Everybody loves them, you know, so I'll just keep it. It is the clumsiest, clunkiest fucking thing ever. It is enormous. It's like carrying a bucket. Like, am I carrying a bucket? Like, what the fuck? It's so awkward to hold. You have to hold it like this. Like, I have bags and shit. I have my purse. I can't, I can't put my hand down. No. It's It leaks, it spills. It is just the most 
obtrusive. No, is that the word I'm looking for? Yes. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, it, it just really feels like it is so, it's like an obstacle to fucking It's to like an obnoxious it. desk accessory. It really is. Because that's really all it's good for. And with all the backlash, like the fucking, the fucking target thing where the women were like fighting each other, I'm almost embarrassed now to have one because the, the backlash was swift. I'm like, well, this is fucking embarrassing. And then, you know, Starbucks, you know, with Stanley did like a collaboration. I'm like, well, I don't have any association with that. Now, I don't know who you give your money to, Awala. Please tell me that it's not somebody that I have to boycott because I love this water bottle. Yeah. I love it. It is so sleek. The handle is like, I'm, I'm not meaning to turn this into a commercial. Like I swear to God, they're not paying us. But like, it's genius. The, <laughs> the latch, also a handle. You can also open it. You can drink it like this. You can sip it. You can also, yeah. this part is a straw. Yeah. It is so smart. It is really smart. This thing has won awards. And the only reason we even are talking about this is because Ron, I bought Ron one for Christmas because he needed a water bottle. Gift. And I bought him a Stanley and he was like, oh, I, I don't really love it. So I was like, screw oh. it. And then he's like, well, my girlfriend has this one. And I was like, yeah, sure, fine, whatever. So I just ordered it. And then I was like, oh, I was looking at my hydro flask, which dented instantly. Mm. And I was like, I, I don't want one. Dude, it's the and best. And then Susie ordered one. I was like, I, I, there, my whole thinking was like, nothing could be worse than the Stanley. <laughs> try this one. And I love it. I read this one thread where people were complaining about the Stanley. And someone in the comments was even like, oh yeah, the production is really down. What you need to do is you need to research like the Chinese, the steel in China. I should and then buy it like that. a month after that. It's not like going to Krispy Kreme, like when the red light flashes, that's when the donuts <laughs> are fresh. It should always be good. Yeah, and like, it should be. It's different. It's, it's, it, your steel should always be the steel that you, you know what I'm saying? Yep. I don't know. I know I what you mean. That's silly to me. But anyway, hey, Awala, if you're watching, I love your water bottles and I would love for you to sponsor this podcast because it's the best. It is the best. I ordered one for everybody. The end. And how does the family like it? Do they like it? Dude, I, theirs haven't arrived yet. My daughters are constantly trying to steal mine. Oh, so really? it's a good so sign. They do. It's a good sign. The way that it drinks is so like comfortable. It's is, really great. Are the Stanleys in the cupboard graveyard yet? Dude, they don't fucking fit. <laughs> <laughs> what so do you what mean? Do you do with They're this? huge. They just sit on the fucking counter. Oh. Yeah. So annoying. Put it in the cupboard. This thing's fucking this big. <laughs> oh, that's so insane. <laughs> and you can't put it this way because one side is this big, the other side is this big, so it's an awkward shape. I'm telling you, they're the worst. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, all you Stanley Cup moms out there. What are you okay? Like what? <laughs> what? How can you? Also, what I would like to impress upon the women who are buying these Stanley Cups, who are all around you know, my age, maybe younger, maybe older, those straws, if you keep sipping on a straw, your lips will start to create those creases and wrinkles. And we, I'm guessing most of us don't want that. Whereas the Awala bottle, you, you can sip from the straw part with a relaxed mouth. Like you don't have yeah. to purse your lips in order to drink out of it. That's nice. That alone, I mean, like I get lip filler and I'm totally fine with admitting it, but the less I have to do it, the better. So I'm just telling you, yeah. that's a whole nother thing. My dogs are going crazy because they want to get to, to, to Archie. Yeah, Archie's scent has been getting a lot stronger. stronger. Yeah, my it's, dogs can smell it. They're like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> he has this like, I don't know what it is. Puppy smells, just like baby smells yeah. are- The best. Infatuating, is that the right word? Intoxicating. Intoxicating, thank you, oh my God. I was like, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> No, but that's how they get you to stick around. Yeah, no, literally. So I will pick Archie up just to creepily <laughs> bury my nose in his fur. I still do it to my kids. I walk <laughs> up to them like. <laughs> <laughs> so aggressive. <laughs> it is. No, it's like cuteness aggression. Oh my God. I don't, I didn't really understand it <laughs> until recently. I was like thinking, I was like, I'm holding Archie and I'm like, why do I want to squish you to death? Uh, that's <laughs> such a real thing. When my babies were little, I'd be like, oh my God, I'm going to fucking squish you so hard. I love you so, so much. So instead, I would just put their heads by my nose and I just, That's <laughs> so relatable. It's really, no, it's a real it's thing. Like so it's a relatable. primal human thing to just like have like, it's, you get overwhelmed with how cute they are. Like you just, you don't know how to output the energy. Yeah. It's just, you're so fucking cute. And in lieu, in lieu of possibly sounding even more like an evil <laughs> Disney villain. <laughs> 
you don't. It's totally the opposite. It, the smell is a smell of like innocence or something. <laughs> and I want to destroy it. <laughs> Okay, now you do sound like an evil That's fucking villain. That's what I'm villain. saying. I was like, wait, it what? just has this like pure sweet. Was not where yeah. I was going with that. Okay, I see it. Yeah. Uh, that's crazy. If this part makes it onto the podcast, then <laughs> thanks, Ron. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, speaking of kids, have you seen that TikTok about the parents, mm -hmm. the, the gay couple who adopted? Um, so there is this white gay male couple who adopted a black baby. This baby could not have been more than what, five, maybe 10 days, maybe two weeks old, I don't even know. But it is a tiny, tiny baby. And there's this video of him, aggress one of the fathers, aggressively brushing this baby's hair. I mean, to the point where like, why are you, okay, anyway. But not even, not even like brushing it. Brushing it, it has, has this like gentle quality to Mashing it. Mashing this like, brush into this baby's yeah. hair. Saying, you know, this video, I hope it reaches the right people. I'm trying to reach black TikTok. Black TikTok. We just adopted this black baby, like making such a big deal about it. We being, can see the video. The baby being a black baby. We can baby. see the baby. Right. Yeah, we can tell. Yeah. You know, can you, can you guys all put in the comments, you know, how I'm supposed to take care of this baby's hair? Like, there's so much about this video and I want to talk about it, but not, I don't want to sp speak over black people because this is definitely something that I've seen many black creators take care of in, in the way that they sh absolutely should have. There are so many things wrong with number one, the tokenization of this baby. It is so clear that this baby was adopted to be part of this like family vlog. You know what I mean? Like it's so obvious. It's giving Tinkerbell, but like more abusive. Remember um, Paris Hilton's little dog? Oh. Her accessory. Oh yeah. But Paris Hilton actually loved that dog yes. and took care of it. So this is an accessory baby. Mm -hmm. And how this, this couple who we all know through other videos knew they were going to be having a black daughter in this adoption, are now are just now only asking the proper ways to take care of their baby, not to mention, Black, the black baby, being a black baby aside, they just don't know how to take care of a baby, let alone a baby that is of a different race than them. Yep. There are videos of, or photos of the baby being like propped up on like, you know, those fake prop like gift boxes. There's a picture of the baby in a ones, in a, like a hoodie strapped into their, their car seat. That is a huge no, no. The baby's got a ring on their finger. Like babies suck on their fingers all day long. That is a choking Who hazard. Who is even making baby rings and yeah. why? That's a whole nother thing. But it's so, in, like, you know, you all know, if you if you pay attention to my social media, I cannot stand family vlogs. Family vlogs to me are like some of the most exploitive, abusive things that I've ever seen. And it's now coming out in the wash that all these kids who were young when this all kind of started, they're all coming out telling their stories Th that one mom who was like arrested for abusing her kids and like letting this other lady abuse, like tie up, malnourish their children for, uh, it, I cannot stand family vloggers. I'm going to say it. I, I stand yeah. on that. Like 99% There's something of wrong them. with it. Yep. There's something wrong with it. And this is not a judgment on, no, it is a fucking judgment. It is a judgment on these fucking parents. What are you doing? Exploiting Very exploitative. The internet exploitative. is a fucking cesspool. I, as a grown adult, can barely handle what's happening, what happens on the internet, yeah. let alone subjecting my kids to it. No. And they say, well, my kids don't watch their videos. It doesn't matter. They are out there for fodder, for the some of the sickest people on earth. And you just put them out there willingly for money? No. Like That's wild. That's so wild to me. I can't stand it. Anyway, so back to this this couple. So we come to find out that one of the, the dads is a convicted felon. And in Texas, where I believe they are, felons cannot adopt children. Yeah. Um, he's a recovering addict, which I will not speak negatively of. My husband is a recovering addict. And I an know amazing that they can, father. Yeah. Thank you. They can live very fulfilling lives as parents. But if this video is any indication as to the type of parent they're going to be, I don't have high expectations because in the first few days of your child's life, you're already ready to exploit, not only the fact that you have a baby, but that they are a, a black child. That was the priority. And it's like, that to me is like huge red flags. 
I, I worry for the, the, the safety and development of this baby. Yeah, I mean, nothing says I didn't care than I waited until they were in my hands to be like, oh, what should I do? That's so bonkers That's mind blowing to me. to me. Like, even if I'm a, like, gonna cook a recipe, <laughs> something just like making dinner, I'm gonna do some research first if I'm unfamiliar with the things and ingredients that I'm cooking. That yeah. alone warrants a fucking Google search. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's literally like waiting until dinner. Like, let's say you're hosting a dinner party and people are sitting at the table and you're like, hey, does anyone know how to cook steak? Also, like, what? <laughs> What steak should I buy? And you're like, you, haven't, you didn't even go to the grocery store? Why would I do that? When I could just ask you guys. And that's a whole nother thing. You reaching out to the black community to do your labor on a choice that you made about bringing somebody into the world with the expectation that they're going to help you is like, that to me is crazy too. Like why, why is their labor at your disposal, why do you think that it is their job to teach you how to do something you could very easily and should absolutely 100% on your own learn yourself? Which may include paying somebody. If you wanna le learn right. about how to do black hair, go to a black hair salon and pay the people to learn, right. watch them, learn, be around it, immerse yourself in it. but And that's the biggest problem with transracial adoptees, which again, for those of you who don't know, transracial adoptee means that you're adopting someone from a different race. Right. Not, not. Changing yeah, your race. Right. That's not what we're talking about. No. I hate that we have to clarify that because yeah. of fucking Ollie London. I hate yeah. that we have to clarify that every time. Mm -hmm. But here's another thing. Going to pay somebody is fine, but why are there no people in your inner circle that are black, that are your friends, that you can ask, are you telling me that this black child that you've brought into your family is the only black person you yep. fucking know? Point number 75 <laughs> as to why this was exploitative. This is a problem. Yeah. This is your first introduction into black people and black culture and black, you know, I don't know, just needs and hygiene. I don't know, like this, this is your first, you, you don't know. Like if I adopted a black child, I could call an, any number of my friends and be like, hey, here's something. Can you point me in the, don't, not even ask them to help me. Can you point me in the direction of some resources? Maybe that I might be overlooking that could help me get this process yeah. going or be more you know, efficient in mm -hmm. this process. Or I don't you know did some doing. research and you're just like, hey, I just want to make sure that like this is right, right? Also, this motherfucker is on TikTok making the video. You can search on TikTok. Yeah. There's a fucking- That's what I was going to say. Also it's like- there. Also, if like I had to, you know, guardian or parent a black child, I already kind of know some stuff because yes. I've been watching videos because I want to learn about other people's experiences. Absolutely. And imagine being the type of person who knows nothing, nothing about what it's like to be a black person in this country and then be like, you know what, no. It's gonna look great though if I adopt a black baby. Right, the optics of me being this savior, saving this poor black baby, and I'm doing everything I can to be the best father in the whole, come on. And then let's say that like, you, you just feigned ignorance and you're like, okay, you know what? That's fucked up. That would be one thing. Right. He turned his profile private and then started like messaging back all the black people commenting, just literally telling them stop being ignorant, stop being mean. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. He literally, what instead of instead of learning, instead of listening, he which, then which played Which is so victim. ironic, because isn't that what he was asking for? Was yeah. feedback? Well, you're getting it. Just because it's not in the way you thought you were gonna get it. Now you don't want it? Fuck that. Fuck that. that Somebody a, please rescue that child. I, I feel like that is, you know, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna sound weird, but watching Black women get their hair done is one of like my- comfort. So therapeutic. Oh my God, okay, thank you. Oh my God, it's so therapeutic. <laughs> it's one of my like comfort genres on TikTok, like watching them like get their hair straightened yep. or get it braided or it's like whatever. It's actually twofold. I love it. It's therapeutic for me to watch, but as I'm watching it, I'm always like, oh man, the burden that man, black that's a lot of women work. have to take to be able to do that, you it's know what I mean? It's a lot, it's a tremendous amount of yeah. work. And when they're and like, labor, hey, this took eight hours, I'm like, Oh, you said that I would not be hours. able to do that. And having somebody like like literally pull at your scalp for eight hours, that's yeah. gotta be painful too. So yep. I watch these things 
And even in just watching videos, I know that not all black hair is the same. Nope. I know that there are levels and different curl patterns and different things that you can do, different you know tools that they use for different types of hair textures and for different braids for different. I know all that because I. It's not even research. It's, to me, it's like you know, it's it's just something that I've you know watched and, yeah. and taken in. Just yesterday alone, I watched this one woman. Um, she had just gotten a, I believe it was called a silk press or straighten yes and then she wrapped it and i watched that video five times because i was in so much awe of the artistry <laughs> yeah. that went into it and just well that's why they called it the crown um act you know when they enacted that you know black women could not be discriminated against or like, we all know that they still are but yep. you know should not be discriminated against because of their hair they call it the crown act because it's it's like adorning a crown i mean it, the labor alone the cost the the effort the knowledge it's 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 quite a bit and for, so that's why it really, I, it irked me and I'm not even a black woman. I can only imagine how black women feel about yes. it. It irked me so much that you went to the lengths of adopting this baby, but didn't do anything outside of just the adoption to yeah. learn about what she's going to need. And she's going to need so much more than just getting her fucking hair done. You know what I mean? Like to, to not have the foresight to be like, I am adopting outside of my race a race that I've never been, clearly don't know anybody from that community. I'm gonna need to not only learn about what I need to do to take care of her, but how I have to actively be an anti-racist yep. every minute yep. of every day of my life in order to give her the best experience growing up in my house that I possibly can. Yeah. That I, is, that's not, that's number one. Yep. And this isn't even like getting just rage baited or whatever the term may be. It's because we know what it's like. Cause I've spoken to, we've watched experiences of other transracial adoptees. Oh yeah. They, I've spoken they reach out to, to us lot. all the time. Yeah. It's specifically Asian. And, and like, I know even from that, how much trauma and like misidentity or like lack of identity that sure. these people face. Mm -hmm. And that's just from simple things of hearing things like, Oh, are you going to teach your child English? You know, like that kind of ignorant stuff. I think like even more than that is like, I don't, I don't see race. So I don't want my child to know that I think that they're different. Okay. You think that in this house, but they don't think that out there. And now you're doing nothing to prepare them for the world that actually yeah. exists. Cause everything you're doing reeks of privilege that right. this child you is don't not have going to, to have. You don't have to talk about it. They're not gonna have a choice. And that's that's something that I think when people are, you know, ad adopting outside of their race is, I think that should be the first thing that they go. And I will say, from talking to a lot of people, I have seen, I will say more people being aware of it yes. than they used to be, which We're is- I'm not saying you great. can't, you can have a transracial adoptee, right. but it is a very, very sensitive thing that you have to be hyper aware of. Right. For not for the benefit of your child. Yes. Like that's that you're doing this because you want to love another human being, because you want to provide for another human being, because you want to give them a life. Okay, well then set them up the best way you possibly can. Not by pretending they, they aren't different than you. That yeah. that's obvious. And not exploiting them because you want to, oh my God, start a fucking family vlogging channel. Barf. I can't. I can't I hate I, I hate it. I yeah. hate it. it makes I mean, me so exasperated. I just can't. Even the type of privileges that when parents even mean well, things can go wrong. Like that yeah. 18, 17 year old boy that just went to Gaza because his dad wanted him to see where his grandfather and their family grew up. What? And then, I don't know this. And then this kid stood in front of the militia holding up a rock and then he was murdered. Yeah, this kid, um, Dang it. I, I knew like, you were gonna, gonna cry. Gonna I knew he was gonna fucking cry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Didn't God I tell it. you? <laughs> yeah, this kid, his uh, dad just wanted to see where he grew up before he went to college. Like where, like, you know, their family came from. He sent them to from. Gaza now? I think he went with him maybe. But then, now? Yeah. And Doesn't that seem a little insane? That's what I'm saying, yeah. It, it, was, it wasn't a smart idea, I don't think, on the parents' behalf, but. Not um, I, th I wanna say like, I wanna say maybe the dad's thought was like, hey, in case it gets decimated, you should go see it yeah but it's getting I, I decimated as we speak obviously i wouldn't but yeah the, and then the kid i like guess my niece is going to greece and i'm fucking freaking out because she's traveling abroad yeah and i guess when that kid went over he felt this like protective need you know he was like i was raised in america i have privilege or i don't know what was going through his head i don't want to insinuate maybe we should do some more research before we talk about this but, I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but basically he he was like shot just he like held up a rock why and he, i i don't know 
I mean, I don't think anyone could ever know. I think we can only assume that he he was like trying to stand up for what he believed was right. <sighs> and then he died. And uh yeah. So even even when people have the best of intentions, even though it may not have been the best decision, um you don't know what can happen, you know? You don't know what can happen. But anyway. Also, speaking of racism. Are we doing that? Is that what we're talking about right now? What about it? <laughs> Did you watch that video of that girl who ran away from her date because she thought that her, she had this feeling that her date was racist because I'm pretty sure you used the N word. Um, she doesn't no, explain it. I didn't. I, I watched the first five seconds of it and then I read the caption. I was like, you know what? I don't think I have the bandwidth for that right now. Yeah. So I Rolled, which is what you're supposed to do when you see a video that you don't want to watch. Yep. Trolls, in case you didn't know. But, <laughs> but then the guy followed her home. Okay. And then she recorded it. And I think for her own safety, she didn't want to like, you know, record his face. So she like had it on her lap so that she had evidence, you know? Was he like standing outside of her car? I think so. And it almost looks like it's like inside of a garage or something. Oh shit. Yeah, oh no. Very that's, intrusive. that's where we just. Mm -mm. And then she's like, she's like, you know, he's like, I'm not a racist. And she's like, well, people who aren't racist don't use that word. Is so is that said. why she left the date? Yeah. Oh. And then he goes, I'm not racist. He's like, let me call my black friends, which I is, mean, come you on. know. We've, we've talked about this at nauseum. That's yeah. the fucking first fucking thing people say. Ignorant racism, gaslighting 101, you know? And then, um, then she starts going, I think she was trying to say, how do you have respect? And I think the, that's where he got cut her off, where she was trying to say like, how do you have respect for me when you you know follow me home or whatever? And he's like, how do I have respect? He's like, how do you have respect when you left in the middle of the date? And then she's like, oh, he starts screaming at her and she goes, oh no. And she starts rolling up her window. Yeah. And then and then it closes and then, he, and then he's like, I spent $300 on you. And then he uses the C, C slur for women, you know? Uh huh. Cunt. See you next you can Tuesday. Say that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just say don't it. like that word. But Same. um and then you know that's and then that's pretty much where it cuts off. But yeah, he like now knows where she lives. Oh my god. And so I was like gonna make a video about it yesterday. It's funny. And then like I was I was scrolled over to like the next video and then the video after that, and then it was a clip of Ronnie Chang. I don't know if you watched his Netflix stand up. Mm -mm. I love him though. I so love guys him. get hung and, up. But there was this one part in his Netflix stand up you know, when like, he just yeah, starts like, going to this thing. He's like, you know, it's crazy when uh, men just think that me? women because like, they don't something. owe you anything. He's like, yeah, women don't owe you anything. And he literally is like, they're not a vending machine where you insert kindness until sex falls out. He's like, they're well, not, actually really, he's so funny. He is funny. And he's like, he's like, they're not like a, you know, Starbucks or like a coffee shop value thing where you like, you buy 10 and then you get sex. He's, you know what I mean? Right. And so I was like, well, he said it way better than I ever could. Yeah. So yeah, he, uh, yeah. That not makes... to mention that's the way to do comedy without punching down and harming a whole community right. of people. <laughs> Take notes, everybody. But yeah, no, that, um, that girl's gonna have to move now. You know? Yeah. He knows where she lives. Um, God, and, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. And, and, and like he says it, he's like, I spent $300 on you. I don't give a fuck. First off, nobody what asked kind you. Of, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's what Ronnie Cheng says. He's like, everything you do, he's like, that's on yeah, you. Yeah, she didn't ask him to spend $300. No. Also, like, you can do whatever you want, obviously, but like who spends $300 on a first? Like that screams Well, and also, if you think that spending $300 on me is going, obligates me to do anything for you, then we're, we've That's been, what I'm saying. we started on the wrong foot to begin he with. He said that clearly because that was, I think what his assumption was. That is, yeah. Right. Like, um, no, you are looking for a prostitute. Yeah. I'm in the, fine with sex work. That's yeah. fine. But just let us, let's just all be like out in the open with what, what you want to spend money for sex. Yeah. There are people who can give that to you. And Ronnie Chang. And not in the form of dinner, cash yeah. in my hand. <laughs> and Ronnie <laughs> Chang says that in the beginning. He's like, people, he's like, guys are always like, I brought her flowers. How come she doesn't want to sleep with me? I helped her study. How come she doesn't want to give me a blow job? Help in me between. Study. <laughs> yeah. He's like in between. He's like, women don't owe you anything and that's then he's crazy. like that's all on you you chose to do those things and to think that you know helping me get you know a better grade on in calculus is good no 
though. I can hire a tutor. I'm good. I'm good. We're and then like, and then what? You think like that woman is going to be like, oh man, I want to marry this guy who thinks right. love is transactional. Or like whatever this conversation we're having is, is like, oh, you spent $300 with the expectation that I was going to have sex with you. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that. <laughs> what you wanted me to do. <laughs> like, what? What is this conversation? Like, 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 that's, not, that's not how that's going to work. Like, oh, now you're going to guilt me? You know, you were gonna guilt fuck? No, absolutely fucking not. Gross. Gross. Mercy fuck? No. No, thank you. Gross. Ugh. I hate everyone and everything. I was I had I was started off super positive, man. Now I fucking hate well, everybody again. Speaking of patriarchy. <laughs> God, man, I thought this was going to be a nice, light fucking episode. I thought we were trying to <laughs> redirect. What about, um, remember Speaking that lady patriarchy. in Houston a couple of months ago? She claimed that she was hit with a brick. Ro. Yeah, Ro. Yeah. She, uh, so it came out this week that um, she lied. She lied about getting hit with a brick. What happened to her face then? She still got hit. And that's that's the point I'm about to get to. But she lied about getting hit with a brick. And then because of that, being part of the main reason why people donated to her, she's now, um, I think there's a warrant out for her arrest for fraud. Oh shit. Yeah, because she she, she gained like $42,000. Oh shit. That. And um, I made a couple videos about that. Yeah, you know? I actually and, made one too. Yeah, and it wasn't even necessarily about the incident. Same. The first video was about how I use that as a lily pad to be like, and like using all the, examples of how the men were reacting, like justifying why right. she was, oh, she's obnoxious, so she, so she deserves to get hit. Right. Um, and then to say that like, this is the reason why women say all men, and I've been getting these crazy flood of comments oh. from of guys course. being like, oh, or, or, it came up that she lied, are you gonna apologize? And I've been like, for, for, for what? what? You think women still don't get abused by men? You think you still think that women who get approached by men aren't scared? You think that we don't have a split second to decide whether we shake a man's hand or not because that could determine whether or not we get punched in the fucking face? That has not changed yeah. because she lied. Or That is all still the same. And that's what I've been commenting back to a lot of them. I've been like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that women weren't being raped, beaten, and yeah. killed. I was like, and then, and then systematically, the men are being protected. I was like, right. I didn't know that stopped. Did right. that stop? That's when, crazy. When she, she lied and she made 42 grand, yeah. like that, that's changed now? Yeah. No. That part is obviously wrong. And obviously a lot of us were fooled on that, but none of anything changes. And people, and like, so apparently what happened was that like she hit the guy first. Uh huh. Then he hit her with a water bottle to the point where her face swelled up like that. Yeah, it was really So big. when people are like, are you gonna, like, it's different. How is it different? Hey, listen, if you hit somebody with the velocity that her injury looked to have been sustained by, then you hit her with something that is equivalent to a brick in my in my mind. Like you hit her that fucking hard. Her face was deformed. Yeah. And like the protrusion was this big. So you hit her hard enough that it might as well have been a brick. Yeah. If you hit her with a brick, she'd be dead. <laughs> even legally, <laughs> like it has to be equal amount of force. You can't shoot someone who slapped you in the face. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like she hit someone with her hands. And, and someone not, used a weapon. Right. On and her. we're not justifying her lying. No, Absolutely no, no. not. Or like hitting that, someone else. Because that honestly it does diminish you know, everything. What a lot of women do go through. Yep. And that is actually really fucking annoying. Yeah, because, because now it's giving all these men platform to justify. Right. But then these, the other thing that I've been commenting back is it's like, it's so weird when men will just publicly proclaim that they will justify hitting any women. violence against that's women. crazy she deserved it yeah. she did it first so yep that's the whole comment section right now she hit her he hit you know she hit him first not to mention that video was like in september or october you're telling me you waited till this whole point saved my video like that's right. your life bro? that's crazy that people remember like that's i don't remember videos i made back crazy. in october let alone expect other people to remember yeah and i you know i made a video and it wasn't about her I think I think this is the video that I, I talked about it on. I equated what she went through under the assumption that what she was saying was true, true was that, you know, she was approached by a man and she declined his advances. And because of that, you know, she got hit in the face, which essentially is true. She did hit him first, but that this is kind of the tr what happened, what transpired. And my whole point was, you know, there are those videos of men 
who go up to women and put their hands out and be like, are you going to shake my hand or not? And like some women respond with like, yes, I'm going to shake your hand. Some women are like, no, like leave me alone. And some women just like ignore them and walk away. And my point in that video is not necessarily about her getting hit. It is that split second decision that women have to make when they're approached by men. And this happens pretty much anytime you interact with a man that you don't know and you're out in public or, you know, wherever or a man will approach you and you have literal seconds to assess yourself, them, your surroundings, the potential, his motivation, what you will do in the event that something goes wrong. And that approach by a man and that momentary, that the split second you have to decide is the thing that I think most men do not think about, that women think about constantly. Constantly, when I am with my daughters and we're in places, I'm like, you need to be aware of this. You need to be aware of this. If somebody comes up to you, then you have to be sure that you approach, you have to be nice, but don't be too nice. Because if you're too nice, they'll take that as you accepting their advance. But if you're mean, then they could get mad at you and could turn violent. Like you have to think of so many things just because somebody is saying hello to you. And I'm not saying that every scenario has this looming doom over it. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that there have been Plenty of instances in my life where I'm approached by a man. And I'm like, God, if I say to him what I want to say, he's gonna, and I have been slapped in the face by men. I have been groped by men. I have been assaulted by men because they didn't like the reaction that I gave them or I gave them the impression that their, their approach was being, you know, reciprocated. And so that, that is a reality that what this situation I was like what I took away from it because I wish that people could separate the message from that one particular instance. Yep. It not, it's not just about her and, and yes, she lied, but this situation is universal for women across the world. It's not just about this one woman. And that's what happens is people hyper-focus on the one moment and use it to either, you know, to discredit when it isn't, factual. So because of that, now all of a sudden no women get assaulted because yeah. that all women are safe and no men are bad. Like that's so stupid. Yeah, People are like, this is an example of the fact that she lied. And I'm like, so you're going to focus on the two to 8% of what happens. You know what that's like? That's like having a friend who's like, let's say you do sports gambling and you have a friend who gives you pointers and they're right. 92 to 98. 8% of the time, but you focus on that two to 8% and you're like, yeah, but you've been wrong a couple, like, are, are you dumb? Do you that know was, how much money you can make <laughs> with someone who's 98 to 92% right? <laughs> that was the most random analogy ever. That was, was the like, most male like, analogy sports ever. Sports betting? Where, where is this going? I'm so confused. I was like, that could have been anything. <laughs> but he chose sports betting, fine. I was like, so relatable, Ed. <laughs> People will totally get but, what you're but saying. But whatever it is, like, you know someone who's like, whatever gambling or guessing on any, you know, yes, like. Yes, yes, yes. And the, the other gamble. thing too is. The is literal that, gamble. Yeah. And the other thing too is, is that like, um, a woman can hit me as much as they want. Right. I would never hit Unless back. Unless your life is being threatened. Exactly. You know? Unless they like pulled out a gun or like they're beating the shit out of me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then maybe I'd be like, okay, okay. okay I don't want to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if a woman slapped you, you your instinct would be to Even if a woman punched back. me in the face, I would just be like, I would maybe push her off and be like, yo, yo no. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be like, yes, I was waiting for that. And that is what a lot of men are doing. Yep. They wait for it yep. and they, they want it to happen. So then that yep. way they can retaliate. Someone in the comments even was like, he's like, so all men, huh? So if some woman um, treated you like you were dangerous, you're not going to, I was like, no, I wouldn't get offended because I listened to them and I yeah. understand their scenario. In fact, do you remember that video from a couple months ago? It went really viral. There was this woman who was like coming out of the supermarket, broad daylight in the, in the parking lot. And some guy starts shouting out to her like, Hey, hi, hello. And she just keeps saying, Nope, I don't no, want thank it. Thank you. Yep. And then like, he was like really upset about it. And at first when I watched that video, I was like, Oh dang, she could have been nice. And then I read the comments and all the women were like, and I was like, Oh, I didn't think of that. And then I learned. And now my perspective and that part is different because right. I've learned from it. You know what I mean? Like it's so weird when people are like learn something and then they get insult insulted by it and like offended. I'm by, sorry you by got people trying to stay safe. Sorry you got smarter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you more informed. And it was the worst thing I could have done is make your brain a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. 
sorry, we're trying to make the world safer for, for, ev- for everybody. everybody. But that's yeah. the thing is like, I don't, the, the times that you just get, sh- like, I don't want people to shout at me. Yeah. Hey, hi, hello, uh, yeah. fuck off. That's true too. Fuck off. Why are you yelling at me? Who the fuck are you? And what do you want? Oh, hello. Oh, great. Somebody said, I don't yeah. know you. Don't talk to me. Yeah, no, it's the same thing. Just because you say hello, you're I'm not, not obligated. Obligated, get out of hello back. I don't That's have to you. be nice to you. Right. I don't. And here's the thing. You don't know me. So why you would expect that you know me well enough to know that my response is going to be positive? That's crazy. Yeah. You don't know me. I could be completely out of my fucking mind. And actually I kind of am. Yeah. Maybe they're just like the biggest assholes ever. Hey, you found her. <laughs> I'm a huge bitch. I'm not going to be fucking nice to you if you're screaming at me. I've learned enough. I've lived enough to know I don't have to fucking be nice to you. Uh, but then, you know, you get hit with a fucking stick. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. People are like, oh, it was just a water bottle. Yeah. Did you see her face? That was not, it was a water bottle filled with concrete. Then, that's crazy. <laughs> because her face was fucked up. So fucked it up. It was fucked up. So fucked up. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe he was just like a super, you know, brute strength guy, but like he had to lean into that one yeah. to hit her. If it was just a water bottle and you did that much facial damage to her cranium, You'd, it it wasn't it was a water bottle backed by a fucking Mack truck. I don't understand how a guy. If could, I shoot a water bottle out of a cannon, it's still gonna go through you. You know. Yeah. So rubber bullets still kill people. Yeah. Do they? Yes. Why if do you they get hit them? in the head or something in the wrong spot, you can still die. A lot of people have. Sorry. Okay. It's so many notifications and so popular. Anyway, I have to pee. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> this is what happens when we don't have like a roadmap for the show. My stream of consciousness starts going, yeah, and just, it's like I was all just about to say intrusive thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I'm like, oh, we're just blurting now. Today's a blurting day. I'm just gonna blurt, 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 blurting. Like I have to pee. I'm hungry. Like I'm just my. I'm just gonna fine. We're gonna let it rip. Let's fucking let it rip. <laughs> I think I'm that's a weird thing to say after you're like, I have to pee. <laughs> Do you also have to fart? I was like, the pee pad's right there. Let's make a day of it. It's fine. <laughs> pee pad for the baby. <laughs> I See? I'm not as normal as everybody <sighs> thinks I am. I got a lot of things up here that are so strange. <laughs> Ooh-wee. And on that note, we also have a couple of writings. <laughs> Segue. It was a perfect, clean segue <laughs> right into Reddit. I feel Susie like he has to pee. Let's read something. I feel like I've gotten really good at those segues. It sounds like this. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's fine. On that note, oh great. Oh no. The first one. Oh, I didn't read it. Okay. I just, I just was all grading, trying to breathe. Uh, we have a write-in from a, a listener. Please say more obvious things, Ed. <laughs> Hiya, it says. This is in response to matching energy episode 33. I am white. I totally get how things are very different for me. This story resonated with me. I am of Northeastern European descent. I am a mutt. I am English, Irish, German, Norwegian, and Lithuanian. Depending on my hair color, I can apparently pass as a native from one of those countries. That's never my intention. I just like to change my hair color. What? Okay. Anyway, my family and I decided to go visit Iceland years ago. My hair was blonde at the time. The flight stewardess came up to me and started speaking in Icelandic. We were taking Iceland air. My response was, dude, what? She was embarrassed and it didn't happen again with her. It did happen a couple of times actually in Iceland, which was hard for me, but whatever. Stick with me here. My dad, technically stepdad, is from England. He's off the boat from England. He came to live with us when I was six years old. <laughs> Off the boat is a very triggering phrase for me, yeah. but okay, go on. And then tied with a white person. It's yeah, a very so confusing. Like a, oh, yeah, save me you too. You associate that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He came to live with us when I was six years old. So while he was always totally English speaking, there are differences between British English and American English. Yeah. We, we know. A Chinese. Yep. If apparently Don't, I'm all triggered again. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I've apparently picked up speech patterns or words or something. 43 years later, apparently there is still some peculiar way about the way I speak. When I was little, kids used to make fun of me because of how I pronounced certain words. I wasn't pronouncing them incorrectly. I was just pronouncing them the way my dad did. 
This happens so much. As an adult, I will be speaking to a stranger and I will get asked if I am from across the pond. That is slang from England. We know. The childhood stuff sucked because I had no idea what I was doing wrong. As an adult, I didn't mind it at first because it was interesting. It's just now I still don't even know what the hell I'm doing or saying or how I'm saying it to prompt this. It's not that I would change it, but I would at least like to understand. It just makes me feel singled out for being different when I'm not doing a damn thing to anyone. I generally assume it is not meant as an insult, but I'm getting a tad wary of it. I don't know. I know it's different from the experiences of the person who wrote that story, but that's just what made me think of it. Thank you for your time. I genuinely appreciate your content. I think this is a really great example of someone who's really trying hard to understand other people's experiences through what they've experienced while also like they did at the end, acknowledging that it's nothing like it, but I'm trying to understand you. And you know, I think that that, so while you're reading that in my mind, I'm just to be honest at first, I'm like, yeah, but you're white. Like, you know, it's like, you're, you're going to get it. It's, it's not, it's not the same. And then I had to like, really be like, Hey, check yourself. I was literally in my head, like, check yourself. You don't know their experience and you should offer a little, you know, empathy for what they're going through. I don't know what, I don't really know what they go through day to day and it could be really hard for them. So like, and especially in homogenous areas, I think people will still look to separate each other. You sure. Be, you know, point out or the like, differences. I, or like it would never occur to me that somebody who is not of, I don't know, Icelandic descent would be spoken to in Icelandic and feel some type of way about it. And that's something that I need to, you know, think about and check myself on, you know, cause it's like, I'm so preoccupied over here. I'm not looking over here and I'm not considering what's happening over here. And that's something that I think that this actually really opened my eyes. I'm like, I wouldn't think that like a French person would be made fun of by a Spanish person or like, you know what I mean? Or like a- Like someone from Spain. Yeah, an Irish person, you know what I mean? Like. So like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get, get there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you yeah. Know? I'm not going to lie. I was a little triggered when I heard things like off the boat, fresh, like off the boat. Well, because and that, it sounded like they were trying to relate, but I took it a little negatively at first. Well, and I think that's the thing too, is they, something that we and they as a write in are trying to consider is that certain things that we experience though over in the umbrella of things are similar. There are very different things happening underneath that umbrella. Yes. Right. Like, Oh, it's, it's actually in this story differences between American and whatever, right. but off the boat for people of color immigrants has like a slightly different sting. It, it, no, it's a very aggressive yeah. punch in the face, like with a water bottle, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's very aggressive, you know, you're fresh off the boat. You know, I, I think like even the show was like this reclamation of, of that phrase because yeah. it's so hurtful to us for that reasons, which in, I think their message was kind of a more casual flippant thing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they didn't see the, the gravity of what that statement actually holds for a lot of people. Yeah. And that's because we are different, but we are the same in a lot of ways yeah. too. So I appreciate that. But, but I do think you shouldn't have to be insecure about the way you speak. I, f I feel like, you know, we live in a day and age where, you know, people are a little bit more accepting of the fact that people have different dialects and things like that. Sure. So just, just be comfortable in your skin and thank you for writing in. Um, we really appreciate it. Okay, second. God, this dog is so fucking cute. Look at the dog. He's like a baby. He's a baby. I'm just petting his little velvety ear. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, baby boy. Okay, go back to sleep. Oh, he's smiling. He loves me so much. He really he's does. So I, I brought him in today and I was holding him. And as soon as he saw Susie, he started squirming and trying to run out. And then Susie had to go, you know, do, do something. She came back out. And like five minutes later, he was like squirming again. I was like, you just saw You just saw her. <laughs> he loves his Como so much. And I love you too. And I don't have any brothers. So I don't have, I'm not Como to anybody. So that's really funny because I was like, hey, how come I don't have any Como's? And then I was like, oh, I don't have a dad. In case you don't know, there are different monikers. Is that what you call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. For different members of your family based on their age, their chron chronology in the age group, whether or not they're from your mother or your father's side of the family, like 
it's really complicated. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen a couple of those videos where people are like, Korean is easy. Here is how you say aunt. And then it's like, aunt, como, <laughs> kumo, kumo. Unless <laughs> it's on your father's side, which it's como. But if it's an older como, then it's kungomo. But if it's, a, it's like, they're so, it's so complicated. Like my daughters are like, well, so wait. Or so sometimes it's samchunoma. Like, yeah. What? Huh? Who? Why is my uncle's wife? Are you talking wife... about my uncle's mom? Or yeah. Why? Are you talking about my uncle's wife? Yeah, because it's so confusing. Some, some name imo. Yeah. But that's because it's the church thing. <laughs> it's so, I, I don't even know. My daughters are like, okay, wait. So your sister is my imo, but your older sister is my kunimo, but to our your your nephew, you're somebody else. I'm like, yes. <laughs> or to, wait, I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, it's fine. You're, just eat your food. <laughs> just, yeah, just, and because I'm the middle. So I'm either kunimo or chagunimo, depending on who, Ooh, which kid's hard, asking. Yep. So it's complicated, but it doesn't matter because I'm your only como. Okay. Keep it the way. Yeah. I, uh, you love me the best. I, uh, I just Americanize it and I just go name emo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, but like when I was younger, I didn't know my aunt and uncle's names. Oh yeah, no, I not, not still to family don't think ones. I do not, not to my family. Ones. My my daughter, I know this is gonna sound terrible. Was like, what was your grandmother's name? I'm like, Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Like I didn't know her by name. Like you would never ask their name, which is yeah. so weird. But it's like when kids don't know what their parents do. Right. <laughs> All right. Last write in. Hello, Susie, Ed, Jilly, Huey. Oh. I really enjoy oh, your and pod. Archie. And oh. Yeah, and Archie. I really enjoy your pod and thank you so much for sharing your views and opinions. I look forward to your new episode every week. Aww. I wanted to reach out to you, Ed, because I went through something similar. Oh God, I hope I don't cry. If oh. you read my letter aloud, please refer to me as Danielle writing from London, UK. I grew up with my Lao dad. I'm white Australian and Lao. Until we were estranged when I was 11 years old. It was my choice. It wasn't until 21 years later that we reconnected. In the, time, in the time that we were estranged, I didn't hear from my Lao side of the family at all. My mom, mom, because you know, she's from mm -hmm. England, had the odd conversation with my dad, but not me. My Lao family is well-to-do, so avoided controversy, and it felt like the situation was swept under the rug. That's I felt so like similar. the black sheep. Whoa. Years later, the power of social media reconnected us. I messaged someone who had a photo of my dad, and this person ended up being one of my twin stepbrothers. The brothers were twins. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You can't have a <laughs> stepbrother like, if they're your twin. Yeah. We <laughs> <laughs> that took us too long. <laughs> we exchanged messages and calls over the next couple of years. Eventually I met up with them and they were in the UK. They met up with me when I was in Australia, in Australia. And the main thing that was missing was connection. Despite the effort and the time we spent, the link was just biological. I had to accept that it was not possible for us to develop a relationship as so much time had passed. And we had very different lives. Oh, this is sad. I wanted to feel like I had a dad in my life. And the things that he was ready to do or make the effort. Sorry, I'm trying not to cry. To do didn't fit my idea of that. That was a hard lesson to learn. I tried, to, I tried for months to maintain a certain level of closeness and contact. But it was never reciprocated. That was the second hard lesson. I guess through this I learned, learned English, that he was okay with not being a part of my life and that I needed to accept that they, that they didn't take anything away from me. I was open to this and ready to work on building a relationship, but he was not. The twins were in their late teens at the time and they were like, cool, we have an older sister, but it didn't go any further than that. My sense of self and validation of my identity did take a bit of a beating, but it made me feel, it made me more able to value and hold dear the people that did see me for me and they were there for me. That includes me. It's a hard process to go through, Ed. And I really hope that whatever efforts you do make lead to you feeling like you know yourself better for it. Since I grew up with my white family, everything I know about Asian-ness, I learned myself. I'm proud of my Asian and Lao identities, but internally, I know that I had to develop that all by myself. And that hurts still to this day. <clears throat> I consider myself to be everyone's Asian auntie now. And this is a good place to be. Good luck, Ed. If you want us to, the listeners of the pod, and Susie, Jillian, Huey, I'm going to also include Archie, we'll be here to support you along the journey. Take that is care. very Daniel. true. Oh, that was so nice. That was nice and really sad. That not, is sad. not, you know. I'm glad that you were able to accept yourself after a long journey, but 
yeah, I, um, that's, that's tough. And I hope that, you know, maybe one day your siblings can look back and want to know you more. And even if not, you know, but I think, you know, Ed, we've been talking about this from the beginning. I think it's, I think you don't really realize the outreach and gravity of what you've done by talking about your story and how many people's lives you've positively impacted from it. Yeah. And I hope, I hope that with this experience, whatever wounds you have, this helps to heal it because it's not just healing for yourself, it's healing for other people. And it's been so interesting for me just kind of as a bystander to watch it all happen. Just something oh, that like I- like a TV show? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, I'm just Ooh, kidding. Ooh, wouldn't that be something? Uh, I am just <laughs> trying to get rid of the sadness with laughter. Gee, if a TV show approached you, that would be so cool. <laughs> I wonder if that is something that somebody would be interested in. Sounds like it. Um, no, but you know, I think it's something that the the impact of your story is is so far beyond and so much further reaching than I think you probably knew it could possibly be. So if there were anything, you know, and again, I don't always look at the positive side of things because I'm just a negative Nelly. But, you know, for you, I, I hope that you can see how much positivity has come from it through what people have told you. And I know you have, but, you know, I, 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 I can imagine how isolating it can feel. So to feel like you're not alone, I think was the goal overall. Um, maybe just happened in a different way. Yeah, it is kind of weird. I don't know where I stand with the search anymore. I feel like I should continue so I don't have regrets. But I also don't feel so urgent about it. Because mm -hmm. like you said, in <laughs> a different way, I feel like my heart feels kind of full. Good. Maybe not fully, but it feels a lot fuller than I did before, you know? Yeah, and maybe maybe Archie that. was also a good distraction too, you know, or I'm, a good piece of it. I mean, I'm no detective, but <laughs> I suspect that maybe this bundle of joy could have been helpful in the healing process. So, um, whoever sent me Archie, whether it's my grandmother, Stella Dexter, thanks. Really, thanks. I still and to all of you guys. <laughs> Doing it, I hate crying so much. That's weird because you do it all the time. <laughs> all, the, all the time. <laughs> That's weird. All the you time. do it, I think, almost every episode. So Which I recently found out yesterday is a symptom of ADHD. So Oh sure. You blame your ADHD on everything. Your meanness, your crying, your lateness, everything. Ooh. It's neurodivergence. Yeah, it's it's kind of starting to become a crutch for you. I'm just, just putting it out there. <laughs> But no, thank you. And on that note, I still really have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we want to thank you all for tuning in on this episode. We really appreciate you guys. If you would like to help us keep this sustainable, in addition to le listening and being a supporter, uh, you could also join our Patreon and become a producer. We have a couple of different options for you, uh, but we would greatly, great, great, greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, you can follow us on our socials as well. You can find me at Sujo One on Instagram and TikTok. I'm on Etch a Sketch with a J uh, on everything. You can find the podcast at What in the Shibar. That's S H I B A L. You can also write us at What in the Shibar at gmail.com. Um, if you care about Archie and Colt, they also have an Instagram at Archie and Colt. Otherwise, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Ding. Ling. <laughs> and otherwise, thank you for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Okay, okay bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs>